What's up guys, Chef Dave back with another cooking video. So today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite sausages from Portugal uh, called Aleda. So this sausage uh, is has a very, very interesting history. Um, I don't know how completely, completely true the story is or you know how much it's been embellished and i like the story I, I just because i think it's you know it's about people's perseverance in the face of you know awful things and uh Ayeda, funny enough is is at the cornerstone of this story so back when the Spanish Inquisition was going on in the like 16th century. Um, people were being persecuted for everything not Catholic, essentially, uh, which is obviously ridiculous. And then during the Spanish Inquisition, the Jews who were living in Spain obviously wanted to get the hell out, and a lot settled into Portugal. And then as that Inquisition and Portugal became more Catholic, the idea of being not Catholic was awful, right? It was used, the worst thing you can be is not Catholic. You know, it would be one thing if, you know, punishment was even jail time or something. But, you know, oftentimes punishment was beatings, um, death, burnt at the stake, uh, very popular awful things of that era were happening to the Jews that were living in Portugal. And, you know, there's this whole thing, you know, where, where you became new Catholic, uh, you know, basically forced to convert. Uh, many of these Jews practiced in secret, uh, although that came with a ton of danger uh, because there were spies everywhere. You know, these spies kind of created a network along with like the priests of finding people out. A lot of these people had deep insight on what the practices were. And through this knowledge, methods were developed to, you know, point these people out, even if they were trying to be in hiding. And one of these methods, it's crazy to think that this, you know, was a method, but uh, obviously, you know, Jews uh, don't eat pork or practicing Jews don't eat pork uh, for religious reasons. Portugal is like pork world. Uh, so oftentimes in towns or in areas, you had uh, public smokehouses because, you know, preservation was a thing, salting, curing, smoking, that sort of thing. If you didn't have sausages hanging in your smokehouse or in your designated area of a public smokehouse, well, they knew you were Jewish and then you were, you know, persecuted. In a town in the north called Mirandela, Jews living there, I guess, came up with an idea. And this is how the story goes. We know this is the one, one thing they're looking for. How do we figure out the best way to have this as part of our lives without, you know, sacrificing what we believe in? And a kind of an ingenious idea came about. They decided to start making sausages to smoke and you know cure just as you would any pork sausage but instead of using pork they used basically anything that is available to them in their religious rites so uh beef game meat like uh, especially in the north venison pheasant quail always uh Poultry, I think, was a big thing, but you had to kind of still make it look like pork, right? So you have to throw a little bit of color into it. That's why beef was used or venison or some kind of red meat. Um, and then basically you took this meat, you know, ground it up, mixed it with uh, bread, which is very popular in the north. That's one of the methods of making sausage in the north. 
and then in a casing, hung, smoked, and you know, there you had it. I'm safe, you know, I'm, I'm eating this pork sausage. So the only pork about it, I guess, would be the casing, uh, which is interesting. Um, although I, you know, through my just research, and I haven't done a, just a, you know, deep, 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 deep dive on it all, but I'm curious what they did about the casings, uh, if they used maybe lamb casings or, although they would be much smaller, they wouldn't look like a pork casing. Um, so I never really got to the bottom of that side. Uh, it was very interesting. I just, you know, again, there's this romantic story of perseverance, um, but not always all the details are, are thrown in there. So basically that's how they hid in plain sight. This, this sausage is said to, you know, be the savor of thousands and thousands of Jewish lives uh, because they were able to hide in plain sight they had their sausages. They weren't, you know, uh, marked because they didn't have sausages hanging. Um, and this over the years, uh, especially over the last, I'd say 20 or 30 years has become obviously a point of pride for, you know, Portuguese Jews. There's a book actually called Secrecy and Deceit, The Religion of the Crypto Jews. Uh, crypto Jews were the practicing Jews under this Inquisition in Portugal, um, maybe throughout the Spanish Inquisition in other countries too. There's obviously different, um, you know, the, the Moors were Muslim. The Moors had a, a big influence in Portugal, you know, pre-Catholicism. And it said that they also had, you know, non-pork sausages. Maybe it's a romantic story. Maybe it's not. Over the last 20 or 30 years, there's been kind of like a Jewish revival in Portugal. It's been an interesting way to tell these stories uh, with a focus of, you know, the, the Jews living in Portugal and how deep the history is between the two, actually. Uh, I, I read in one place there's... Um, the second most powerful person in Portugal was always a Jewish man because they were always under the king, as they called it, because the right-hand man, one of the largest or most important advisors to the kingdom was a Jewish man, usually. And this was mostly because uh, the Jews at the time put a huge, huge importance on education, becoming literate, pushing sciences. Uh, matter of fact, you know, this age of, you know, exploration that Portugal so known for the Jews, they had a huge contribution to that era because they were highly educated and they were the astronomers and, 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 you know, helped with the navigations and, and all that. So there is just this really deep, uh, interlocking between, you know, Jews in Portugal. So they really kind of dug into that a little bit and they're trying to show points of pride over the last, you know, 20 years um, be to, with that relationship. Back to the food. <laughs> so this sausage has become very important and really, like I said, a point of pride uh, for the Portuguese in general. Uh, so much so that in 2011, it became one of these seven gastronomic wonders of Portugal. Um, it is really one of my favorite sausages. Um, I, today's versions, obviously, uh, most of them are probably made with pork, uh, or at least a combination of pork and chicken, uh, or pork and duck sometimes, uh, some other game meat. Um, this variety I'm holding here is pork and chicken. I really love it. It's oftentimes served uh, at breakfast uh, or in the afternoon for lunch or something where it's either grilled or pan fried and served with fried eggs, bread, rice, uh, things like that. So today we're going to do, I'm just going to show you how to cook this up my favorite way. <laughs> 